What is going on with Ethereum? As the crypto market has corrected, the number two cryptocurrency by market cap and the number one smart contract platform, Ethereum, has taken a nosedive and over a year's worth of gains have been erased, at least in the short term. So what has happened? Is Ethereum dead? Can it ever recover? If so, when? Well, I'm gonna take a deep dive on that and talk about that in this video today as a blockchain developer myself who works this technology on a daily basis and as a longtime ETH holder. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on the channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something you're interested in, then smash that like button down below and subscribe. And if you want to take advantage of all the insane opportunities happening inside this industry, then I can show you how to increase your income by becoming a blockchain developer over at dappydiversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's get into this. Let's talk about Ethereum. So obviously nothing I'm saying in this video is designed to be financial advice. I'm not telling you to buy, sell, or hold any cryptocurrency based on this information. But let's talk about what's been going on. Because if you've been watching the crypto prices at all in the past month or so, you know everything's taking a nosedive and Ethereum has gotten hit particularly hard through this process. And people are freaking out, like, is this cycle over? Is this a correction? You know, why has ETH taken such a nosedive? Why is it underperformed things, you know, like Bitcoin, Solana, et cetera, et cetera? Well, and, and is it dead? Well, you have to look at that in terms of the price and the technology because these things are somewhat correlated. So we'll start off with price. So, you know, what's going on with Ethereum right now? Why is the price dip so much? Well, I, the entire crypto market has dipped, okay? And so is the stock market. And I think these two things don't look the same. It's not a coincidence. It's not an accident. There's still a lot of fears on the table about the broader health of the economy. There's lots of uncertainty with the change in the new administration inside the United States. And I think that's causing a lot of panic in the marketplace. And that's trickling down to crypto itself. So why has Ethereum, you know, underperformed? Why did it barely even touch its prior all-time high and then correct, you know, about 50%? Well, honestly, the main reason is competition. Okay, you've got Bitcoin, which has really led the entire crypto market over the past Past few years. We haven't really seen every single cryptocurrency follow up in tandem with Bitcoin like we've seen in prior cycles. So the cycles are changing. But also if you look at altcoins, specifically alternative alt layer one smart contract platforms, Ethereum has a ton of competition. Okay. And during this cycle, you know, people have been speculating on Solana as like the next hot thing that's going to outperform Ethereum. It's going to eat its lunch. You've seen all the meme coin activity happen on there. All the adoption happened there. And so a lot of people, you know, were just flooding to that as an option. And that sucked away a lot of the buy pressure that might go into an asset like Ethereum. When are you going further down the risk curve? Now, I think a lot of people have been a little upset at the gains at something like Solana as well. But that, in my view, is one of the biggest reasons we've seen the underperformance relative to something like Bitcoin is because of so much competition. So what does that mean for Ethereum? Is it dead? Can it ever recover? Well, spoiler alert, no, I don't think it's dead. And yes, I do think it can recover for several reasons, okay? And we're just talking about price, okay? I don't think that the competitive aspect that you're seeing right now is going to be as big of a problem in the future, okay? ETH still has a bright roadmap ahead of it, which I'm going to talk about here in a minute. It has a strong, compelling use case for why it can still be the dominant smart contract platform in the coming years. You know, Bitcoin's always going to be a household name, but I do think that ETH will have periods of outperformance in the future. And then finally, you know, like I was saying before, I think a lot of people were still pretty upset with the alternative layer one smart contract trade this time around. And you're going to see diminishing returns on that thing from cycle to cycle. And I don't think as many people are going to buy the fact that you're just going to have some amazing L1 that's going to outperform everything else. Too many people try to do that and it's just too much risk. And so with that being said, let's look at some of the positive fundamentals for Ethereum in the future. Because when I look at a correction like this, I mean, honestly, I know it sounds cliche, but really this is just noise in my view. I mean, I've been through these markets time and time again, and I still see a strong, compelling reason why this trend can continue to grow exponentially over time. I could give you a million different reasons, but I'm really just going to give you one sort of trump card that I think is going to be the biggest reason out of all the others. I can sit here and tell you that Ethereum's got some upgrades coming on the pike. It's got all these cool apps coming on it. It's got adoption, but, but here's the real thing that you have to pay attention to. Ethereum is in the strongest position to corner the market on the number one use case for crypto that I believe has the strongest long-term potential. Okay, that's huge. That's the whole point. So what is that? Let me explain. Well, basically, it's what I'm just going to lump into a basket called on-chain finance. Okay, so, you know, we've been working with blockchains for a very long time to see like, hey, what can you do with them? What's the technology good for? And time and time again, the number one use case that has proven to work is basically on-chain finance. This encapsulates a lot of things like DeFi, 
uh, real world assets, just cryptocurrency in general. So why is that? Well, it's because blockchains are closed systems that are really good at managing financial value and transfer of that financial value and basically storing that value. And time and time again, between cycles, you know, we've seen lots of hype come and go, things like ICOs, NFTs, meme coins, things that are kind of flash in the pan fads and might have their time in the sun and then crash and never really return. But time and time again, on-chain finance still continues to be the use case that is getting adoption. And it's getting even more adoption this cycle, despite what's happened with cryptocurrency prices. And I think we're just scratching the surface and that there is a lot more potential here to come, particularly when we start talking about a future where you are taking the current financial rails, I'm talking like your banking system, I'm talking about like all the things that happen behind the scenes when you move money from one bank to another and moving that stuff over to a blockchain. And I think that Ethereum is at the core epicenter of that for when that transition happens, that that's the most likely bet to where most of that activity is going to take place. And so, for example, you know, just in the past few days, we've seen Fidelity, a massive player in this space, file with the US SEC to register a blockchain-based tokenized US dollar money market fund, initially built on Ethereum with, of course, potential expansion to other blockchains. So this is huge. You know about money markets, a core part of people's long-term saving strategies and digital banks being tokenized and put on blockchain. That's the type of stuff that's happening right now. Major players starting to do this. And you have to look at what most people's first choice is for that type of experimentation. It's putting it on Ethereum. And that's for good reason. We're talking about Fidelity, BlackRock, Circle... PayPal, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so that's the big picture, okay? Basically, Ethereum is here to stay. It's not dead. You know, there's, I mean, all these haters online that are saying, hey, you know, blitz that, blah, 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 blah. What you have to look is the big picture is that the trend is still continuing towards adoption. Big players are going into the space. And at that core use case for blockchain, which is undeniable, which is essentially, you know, internet finance, it's doing that and it's continuing to move forward. Now, what could happen to the price? So, you know, like I said before, it sounds cliche. It sounds like, you know, weak sauce to say, say, well, this is just noise, right? When you see something that's like a 50% correction. But if you actually look at the trend over time, okay, the trend of Ethereum is still up into the right when you look at sort of this line down here over time. And really what this is doing is honestly reverting back to the mean of this parabolic trend line up. I would say it's a little undervalued right now relatively, obviously not financial advice, but my, you know, my bet is that this trend continues upward. If you look at everything that's happened along here, really these are just bubbles on this trend line as it's, you know, basically going up to the right over time. Now, when you're talking about the actual technology itself, you know, when can we see the future of blockchain being what we want it to be, where, you know, basically the banking system is built on blockchain, you know, that entire future is still several years down the road. But when I say that everything is noise along that journey, what I mean is what you're really looking for is to stay in the game with the technology while it's on this period of hockey stick growth. That's a chart that you really have to mentally internalize. If you look at something that has a very slow rise and then all of a sudden, boom, it goes up or to the right, it's this phenomenon of overnight success. You're looking at all the time that it takes to put the hard work in to see these incremental, tiny, marginal gains until, boom, everything that's required to get everything right to achieve escape velocities that you can have liftoff, that takes a very long time. We're still on that trajectory, but at some point, I, my bet is that this is going to pop off like crazy and a lot of people are going to be in disbelief. They're going to be sidelined whenever it happens. And so my view is that right now is an amazing time to double down and get into this space and start looking what's what happened to this technology while everybody else is not paying attention because they think, oh, the bull market is just over, which I, I still don't think that it is. But if you have the ability to basically do the opposite of what most people will do in these situations, then you're able to set yourself up for some really exciting opportunities down the road. So if that's something that's interesting to you, then make sure you smash that like button down below and subscribe to this channel. And if you're as fascinated with the potential of this technology as I am, then what can you do today? Well, you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find my free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those videos and you went to the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely, I can show you become a blockchain master step-by-step -step for start to finish over at adaptiversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You really don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. And the next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.